In this video, we're going to continue solving related rates problems. Here's the first one. A 15 feet ladder is resting against a vertical wall. The bottom is initially 10 feet away from the wall and is being pushed towards the wall at the rate of 1 fourth feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder move up the wall 4 seconds after it is pushed? Okay, so we have a ladder that is resting against a vertical wall. So as you can see, the setup generates a right triangle. Right? This is 90 degrees, assuming that the wall is perpendicular to the ground. Okay? And then, what are the quantities involved? We have the length of the ladder. You also have this distance from the vertical wall to the bottom of the ladder. And lastly, we have this distance from the ground to the top of the ladder. Okay, so let's define the quantities or the dimensions involved. First, we have the length of the ladder. It's 15 feet. And then the bottom of the ladder is initially 10 feet away from the wall. So this distance is initially 10 feet away. But if we continue reading the problem, uh, the bottom is being pushed towards the wall. So initially this is 10 feet and over time this will change because it will be pushed, the bottom will be pushed towards the wall. So since it is changing over time, let us label it as a variable, say x. Okay. But again, let's keep in mind that it's initially 10 feet. Okay. And then as the bottom of the ladder is being pushed towards the wall, the top of the ladder will be moving upward, right? So this distance will also change over time. So let's label it as a variable, say, y, okay? And then we also have here the rate at which the bottom of the ladder is moving. So as the bottom of the ladder is being pushed towards the wall, x, the distance from the wall to the bottom of the ladder will decrease over time, okay? And the rate at which x is decreasing is the same as the rate at which the bottom of the wall is moving, okay? And since it will decrease over time, then dx dt equals negative one-fourth feet per second, okay? And then we are asked to find how fast uh, the top of the ladder is moving up the wall. So the rate of change at which the top of the ladder is moving is the same as the rate of change of y with respect to time. So basically we want to find dy dt at the instant when t is 4 seconds or the time is 4 seconds. Okay, let's solve. Since we have a right triangle, we can relate x and y using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides of the right triangle. So in this case, hypotenuse or the longest side is 15 squared equals x squared plus y squared. Alright, so next step is to differentiate this equation with respect to time. Okay, 15 squared, derivative with respect to time, this is a constant, so it will become 0. x squared with respect to time, that's 2x dx dt. 
same with y squared 2y dy dt okay and since what we want is dy dt let's isolate dy dt okay transposing 2y dy dt to the left side we get what negative 2y dy dt equals to x dx dt isolating dy dt so we need to divide both sides by negative 2y we get what negative x over y then dx dt okay so this is now our working equation for dy dt so as you can see to solve for dy dt we need the values of x y and dx dt so no problem with dx dt because it's given as negative one fourth feet per second now what are the values of x and y remember we want to solve for dy dt at the instant when the time is exactly four seconds okay so first we need to solve or find x and y at t equals four seconds let's start with x x is initially 10 feet right and as the bottom of the ladder is being pushed towards the wall this will decrease or x will decrease by one fourth feet per second so subtract the distance covered by the bottom of the ladder after four seconds so that's equivalent to what the rate so that's one fourth feet per second times uh, the time so after four seconds therefore we need to multiply four seconds okay so time will be cancelled x is 10 feet minus 1 4 times 4 that's 1 so 10 feet minus 1 foot x is 9 feet after 4 seconds okay so we now have x we also have uh, the length of the ladder which is the longest side of the right triangle so using the Pythagorean theorem we can solve for y at 4 seconds okay so Pythagorean theorem y is equal to square root of uh, the square of the longest side so 15 squared minus the square of the other side in this case 9 so 9 squared y now is equal to 15 squared minus 9 squared this is 225 minus 81 so y is equal to 2 to 5 minus 81 that's 144 therefore y is 12 feet okay so this is the distance okay from the ground to the top of the ladder after four seconds all right so we now have the values for x and y when t is equal to four seconds we also have dx dt right so we can plug in the values and solve for dy dt so x is 9 y is 12 dx dt is negative 1 fourth therefore dy dt is equal to three over 16 feet per second so this is now the rate at which the top of the ladder is moving up the wall after four seconds okay notice that we got a positive value this is expected because as uh, the bottom of the ladder is being pushed towards the wall the top of the ladder in turn will move up the wall and 
this means that y will increase over time. It's an increase, therefore the value of dy dt should be positive. Next problem, a trough of water is in the shape of a triangular prism. Its length is 80 centimeters and the ends, which are in the shape of isosceles triangles, have a width of 50 centimeters and height of 20 centimeters. Water is being pumped in at the rate of 1,500 cubic centimeters per second. At the instant when the height of the water is 150 centimeters, what is the rate at which the height of the water is increasing? Okay, so we have a trough of water in the shape of a triangular prism. So it looks like this one. Its length is 80 centimeters. So this is 80 cm. And the ends, this is talking about the base of the triangular prism. So it's in the shape of an isosceles triangle. Okay. Having a width of 50 cm. So this is 50 centimeters. And a height of 20 centimeters. So this is 20 centimeters. Okay. And then... Uh, water is being pumped in, so water is flowing inside, therefore the volume is increasing, the volume of water is increasing over time. We can denote that as dv dt, and it's equivalent to positive 1,500 cubic centimeters per second, so cm cube per second. And since uh, the volume of the water inside will increase over time, we have some corresponding quantities that will also change over time. Okay, So we have this quantity. Let's say this is W. This will change over time. And also the height of the water inside. So let's call that, for example, H. Okay. At the instant when the height of the water is 150 centimeters, so we have a condition. Okay, so this is where we want to base our calculations when h is 150 centimeters. What is the rate at which the height of the water is increasing? So this is talking about dh dt. We are asked to find dh dt when h is exactly 150 centimeters. So to solve for dh dt, we need to set up an equation uh, in terms of the quantities involved as the volume of the water is increasing over time. Okay. In other words, we need to relate W and H with the volume of the water and their corresponding rates of change. Okay. So we can start by uh, taking the volume of the water inside. So again, our basis for our calculations is the water. Okay. Since the water takes the shape of its container, and the container in this case is a triangular prism, then the volume formula that we will be using is the volume formula for a triangular prism. And it's equivalent to the area of uh, whatever the shape is the base of the prism. In this case, it's an isosceles triangle. So area of a triangle is one half base times height. Right. So one half base. Uh, this is the base. In this case, it's denoted as W. So W times the height of the triangle. So that's h. And multiply this by the length of the prism. So in this case, the length of this 
triangular prism shaped water is the same as the length of the trough which is 80 centimeters so times 80 centimeters okay so we can simplify this to 40 w h okay now if we immediately differentiate this equation with respect to time then we get dv dt equals 40 times so we have a product of w and h to find the derivative we have to apply the product rule and differentiate with respect to time implicitly so uh, this is w dh dt plus h times dw dt okay so let's inspect each quantity in this equation uh, dv dt is given so check we don't know w but we can solve for w using the concept of similar polygons later on all right so check we can solve for w later on uh, dh dt this is what we are asked to find h is given as a condition so check and now here's the problem with this approach we don't know dw dt so we cannot solve for dh dt using this approach because we have two unknowns in that case we need another equation that involves dw dt but then again uh, there's no mention of the change in the width of the water inside over time so we cannot really solve for dh dt using this approach so we need to find another way to solve for dh dt remember i mentioned earlier that we can solve for w using the concept of similar polygons so let's try if we can reduce this equation in terms of a single independent variable h so that we can get rid of dw dt okay so applying the concept of similar polygons or in this case similar solids all right the ratio between corresponding linear dimensions or corresponding linear measurements must be equal so for example if we take the ratio between the widths so that's w over 50 so w is the width of the water which is in the shape of a triangular prism and then 50 is the width of the bigger triangular prism which is the trough right this must be equal to say for example the ratio between the heights okay so height of the water is h and then height of the trough is 20 centimeters so that's 20 okay so let's solve for w we get what 5 over 2 h and now we can plug in this equivalent expression for w into the volume formula so that uh, it will be reduced into a single independent variable in this case h okay so v equals 40 w where w is 5 over 2 h times h so v now is equal to 40 divided by 2 that's 20 20 times 5 that's 100 h times h so h squared okay so let's differentiate this equation with respect to time we get dv dt equals uh, power rule so 2 times 100 so 200 h dh dt okay 
right we can now solve for a dh dt by uh, plugging in the values for dv dt and the condition that h is equal to 150 centimeters right so 15 equals 200 times 150 dh dt solving for dh dt we get 1 over 20 and the unit is uh, centimeters per second okay. so this is now the rate at which the height of the water is increasing as water is being pumped at the rate of 150 cubic centimeters per second and at the instant when the height is 150 centimeters next problem a light is placed on the ground 30 feet from a building a man six feet tall walks from the light toward the building at the rate of five feet per second find the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing when he is 15 feet from the building so let's make a sketch let's say this is the ground and then a light is placed so let's say this is the light on the ground 30 feet from a building so say this is the building the distance from the light to the building is measured to be 30 feet And then we have a person, six feet tall. Let's say this is the person. He is six feet tall, right? Uh, he is walking from the light toward the building. So walking in this direction, okay? So as he is walking away from the light toward the building the distance or his distance from the light is changing over time so let's call that x okay and this is changing at the rate of 5 feet per second so dx dt is uh, 5 feet per second the sign is positive because this will increase over time So, because of the light, the person casts a shadow on the wall, okay? And as the person walks from the light toward the building, the length of the shadow will decrease over time, okay? Since it will change over time, let's label it as a variable, say, y, okay? Again, as the person walks toward the building, the length of the shadow will decrease okay and that's what we are asked to find the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing when he is 15 feet from the building okay when he is 15 feet from the building his distance from the light which is x is equal to 15 so this is now where we base our calculation for dy dt okay okay before we solve let's simplify the sketch first so we have generated two right triangles okay so the bigger right triangle its base is 30 feet And then this side is y 
and then for the smaller right triangle so this one so this side is 6 feet and then this side is x okay so for this one we can apply the concept of similar triangles okay so if we take the ratio between any two sides okay it must be equal to the ratio between the corresponding sides of the other triangle okay so let's say we take the ratio between y and 30 this is uh, these are the sides of the bigger right triangle right so y over 30 this must be equal to uh, the ratio between the corresponding sides on the smaller right triangle so y corresponds to 6 on the smaller right triangle and then 30 so it's the base of the right of the, the bigger right triangle corresponds to x which is the base of the smaller right triangle okay isolating y we get so 30 times 6 that's 180 over x and then differentiate this equation with respect to time so dy dt equals negative 180 x squared dx dt okay all right so let's check if all the needed quantities are given x is given as the condition x equals 15 okay then dx dt is given also as 5 feet per second so let's solve for dy dt this is equal to negative 180 over x where x is 15 squared times dx dt where dx dt is 5 feet per second okay dy dt therefore is negative 4 and the unit is feet per second so this is now the rate at which uh, the length of the shadow is changing when he is 15 feet from the building uh, the value is negative because if you recall we established earlier that as the person uh, walks toward the building the length of the shadow will decrease over time okay next problem a train starting at noon travels north at 40 kilometers per hour at 2 p.m. Another train starting from the same point travels east at 50 km per hour. How fast are the two trains separating at 3 p.m.? Alright, let's sketch. So the first train, let's say this is the starting point, is traveling north. And then the second train is traveling east. Alright. So this is now the distance between the two trains. And a right triangle is generated. Let's label this distance as y. And then let's say we call this distance x all right the first train is traveling at the rate of 40 kilometers per hour therefore y is changing at the rate of 40 kilometers per hour so dy dt is equal to positive 40 kilometers per hour and then the second train is traveling at the rate of uh, 50 kilometers per hour therefore x 
is increasing at the rate of 50 kilometers per hour. So dx dt equals positive 50 kilometers per hour. Let's call this distance s. And then we are asked to find how fast the two trains are separating. Uh, that means we are asked to find ds dt at 3 p.m. Okay. Now, it's important to note that the first train had a head start of 2 hours because the second train did not start traveling until 2 p.m. Right? To solve for ds dt, uh, our working equation is the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle. Okay, so longest side is s, s squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So x squared plus y squared. Okay, differentiating with respect to time, we get. 2s ds dt equals 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Okay, remember we need to find a ds dt, so let's isolate ds dt. So isolating ds dt. We can cancel out the common factor 2, right? So we have x dx dt plus y dy dt all over s. Before we can solve for ds dt, we need to find first uh, x, y, and s at 3 p.m. So at 3 p.m., the first train had already traveled for 3 hours. Therefore, y is equal to 40 kilometers per hour times 3 hours. So y is uh, 120 kilometers. And then the second train had only traveled for uh, 1 hour. Okay, because it started traveling at 2 p.m. Therefore, x is 50 kilometers per hour times 1 hour. So, x is 50 kilometers. Okay. And then, s at 3 p.m. So, s is square root of uh, 120 squared plus 50 squared so s is equal to 130 kilometers okay and then let's plug in the values x is 50 dx dt is 50 plus y where y is 120 kilometers and then dy dt is 40 kilometers per hour so times 40 divided by s which is 130 kilometers okay solving for ds dt we get 730 over 13 and the unit is kilometers per hour okay so this is now the rate at which the distance between the two trains is changing at 3 p.m.